What's going on guys, Jessica here. It is the day after 4th of July and uh, we've got a few orders to pull. We're gonna go over a couple of things. Um, you guys are gonna see a little bit of this mess over here, which is actually a lot of leftovers from the storage unit. So I'll give you guys a little update on that as well. Um, we got a lot of work ahead of us. We've got a, a project coming up relatively quickly. And uh, I don't know when we're gonna announce that. I gotta talk to Xena about it a little bit more. So guys, make sure you hit the notification bell so you get notified when uh, we decide to announce, make that announcement. But um, yeah, we got some exciting news. Anyways, I'm rambling about it. Let's, we've got some orders to pull. We have one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten orders technically, but two of them are gonna be combined because one person bought three shirts two on one transaction and one a little bit later. So um, I actually have already pulled those t-shirts, but let's go ahead and pull our first item. It's a Honda Civic, 1990 Honda Civic factory service repair manual. And you guys may have seen that recently. We picked that up at a yard sale a few weeks ago for five whole dollars. So let's grab it. It is down here in J1, correct? Yeah, J1. So it's down here. And it's heavy. Look, this, I need to list more, y'all. Look how empty this bin is. I have not been listing enough lately. Not enough. Nowhere near enough. So we got that manual. It's this big guy right here. Oh my gosh. Look at this thing. It's thick and it's heavy. I'm going to have to ship that one in a box. Normally I would, like these, I would wrap it in cardboard. or put it into a one of our poly bags, no suffocation warning poly bag wrap it in cardboard and then put it into a bubble mailer and that's normally enough to protect a book like you know something like that that's not super pricey but this honda civic book she's heavy that's a good i think it's five plus pounds i do believe but uh, that's sold for 74 dollars and 99 cents so if you see these old service manuals that are like uh what do you call it dealership or shop service manuals these are worth way more than what you saw in the tote, like the Haynes manual. So if you see these, grab them. Okay, so our next item is actually in the tote right next to that one. And it is a wall mount for an, I think it's pronounced Eero, E-E-R-O, six mesh Wi-Fi system. So it's like something you can mount it on the wall so it's not sitting on the floor. You don't have to put it on a table or something. So that is in J2, which is this one right here, right next door. And it looks like there's only one left in there. This one right here, oh, if I can get it. Here's what it is. It's actually three of them in one box. We bought this at the Amazon bin store well over a year ago, because we haven't shopped there in a long time, but this was like a dollar or 50 cents or something like that. The last one, I've sold like three of these, um, but it took a long time to sell, but it did sell for $11.99. All right, so our next order is over here in our wall of totes. I built these shelves probably two years ago now, something like that, year and a half, two years ago. Built these myself, but yeah, they hold a lot of, holds a lot of tubs. Zena said when we move, I have to build another one of these, so we'll see how that goes. But our next order is in, what was it, D2, I do believe. Yeah, D2 right here. And this might be the last of these also. There, had to pull that down and make it a little bit more manageable with the camera in my hand. Should be in this box. And I only need two, but that actually might be four. We may not be sold out of these yet. Nope, we're not. So two of these, I bought these boxes, two of these boxes. I had it in my head that I bought them at Amazon Ben's store also, but I did not. I actually bought these at an estate sale. Um, there were two, somebody had two boxes of them. I verified that they're not missing any, like that they didn't use a couple out of a box, but whoops. So if I can get that closed, there we go. Put that away in just a second. But so what they are is those little rubber tips like you see the people at the post office have on their fingers so they can sort letters and stuff faster. So there's 12 in each box. I paid very, very little for the little cases of four. I think I paid 50 cents or a dollar for each box of four. So I lotted these up. You get two boxes, so you get uh, 24 total, which is a lot. I don't know why you need that many, but they've been selling and those sold for $7.99 for two. Okay, so our next order is actually three Snap-on t-shirts. That's the one I mentioned in the beginning of the video where somebody had, they, uh, I had sent out offers on two Snap-on t-shirts and they wanted to buy those two and they got to look and saw that I had more, picked out a third and messaged me and asked if I could combine shipping. Of course I will. I mean, it's going to happen anyway, so... 
Um, I went ahead and refunded them a partial, like, I just refunded them pretty much shipping on one t-shirt because combined the three could ship for the same price as two. So I've already refunded them that partial refund, but I actually already have them pulled because I had to weigh them and get them that total. So I'll put images on the screen for you guys so you can see the three that sold. Um, the first two together sold for $28.78, so that's not bad at all. And then the third sold for $13.49, so pretty good sale. Okay, our next item is a little pin. It's like a lapel pin. Um, recently, I don't, I'm trying to remember where we got them at. Zena, I think Zena got them while she was out, uh, yard selling by herself one time. She, she left me home and she likes to do that from time to time. If I'm not feeling like going, she'll go by herself and... She comes home with some cool stuff. And I do believe that's when that happened. She brought home like a little baggie or a something container of uh, lapel pins and they were all Desk and Derek Club, which I guess is something to do with um, oil rigs and the and oil companies, you know. I don't, I think Desk and Derek, probably somebody who works in administration or some sort of a desk job. So they have these pins and it's a club and we've actually sold several. The one that we sold is in SM12, which is right here. And I'm sorry for the poor lighting guys. We've got this clothing rack back here with these boxes is kind of blocking the light. So we're looking for 55th anniversary San Angelo, Texas desk and Derek club. I said, I read that really weird. Um, let's see, it is an oil Derek. Uh, an oil derrick, and what is this, like, kind of a triangular shape. Not that one. I always do this to myself. I'll put all these pins that are the similar thing in the same drawer, and then I have to hunt for it. So there it is. Not the greatest picture, but you'll be able to see it better on the sold comp there on the screen. So, little pin. That sold for $3.99. Our next item is a t-shirt and it is number 528. And as you guys can see, I am standing right here in this little tiny squeezed aisle way. Here are our clothing carts. <laughs> this is all right here. That's all storage unit stuff in those blue totes and this top tote. These totes here and box are all storage unit. The photos, the pictures from the storage unit some more clothing and then this little tub right here is what's left from the flea market from last weekend so very very little left from the flea market but for the moment i'm having to squeeze through stuff to get to where we're looking to get to get to what we're looking for so we're looking for number 528 and that should be in this second one so let me roll this one these rolling carts have been such a lifesaver for us when we bring home large lots of stuff we can just roll them around to wherever we want so Look for 528 and I actually see it right there, blue. So this t-shirt, it's actually a Flaming Lips t-shirt, if you know of the Flaming Lips. They're actually an Oklahoma band, very like electronic funk kind of music. Um, actually really cool. I actually spotted the lead singer Wayne Coyne at the Oklahoma City Airport when I used to deliver magazines out there. So that was really cool. But this t-shirt actually sold for $31.99. The reason why it sold for more is because, uh, Wayne Coyne and Miley Cyrus, I guess, are buddies. And Miley Cyrus wore this same, not this exact one, of course, but wore the same shirt at some sort of benefit or something that she did for animals. And so it got popular because of that. So I made sure to put Miley Cyrus in the, uh, in the title for this listing. And I think it helped it sell. So $31.99 for a t-shirt. Okay, so our next item is a sweatshirt. I do have a majority of our clothing on sale right now through Tuesday, it's like 20% off. So like clothing, shoes, accessories, hats, things like that, all on sale through Tuesday. So uh, not trying to get you guys to go buy anything, just letting you know, that's why we're selling so many clothing items today. So um, the sale started on Tuesday and it ends on Tuesday. So um, we sold this vintage sweatshirt. It is a Crown Pro Audio crew neck sweatshirt. Um, and it is number 369, so it should be in this first one here. Let's see, what do we see? 244, 315, 341, I bet you it's in this one. 369 is what we're looking for. Uh, please don't drop this bucket, 366. What's that last one? 367, so I bet you it's this side. Yeah, it's this one right here on the side. See so if I can get this out of here without, whoop, I'm gonna lose it. There we go. 
The power of the knee. There we go. We got it. You can't really see it. Oh, there we go. There's the logo for it. Crown Pro Audio. So it's just a white sweatshirt, but this sold on sale for $32.39. So don't pass up those vintage sweatshirt guys. You, you never know. Sometimes they're worth quite a bit. So pretty happy with that one. All right. So our next item is a Thomas, Thomas and Friends train. Um, it's a die cast one and it's also in SM12, which we just pulled that pin out of. So that's kind of funny that it's in, supposed to be in here. Uh, supposed? What? That says SM12. There is no train in SM12. I see trains up a little higher. Maybe it's this one here. Uh, it is die cast with a little magnet. Is it? I think it's this one right here. I think it's that. That says SM10. Let's verify. Hold on. Give me just a second. 2012. Yep, that says 2012. Die cast. It is die cast. That's got to be it. Let me double check the pictures real quick and I will verify it. I'll be right back. Okay, so it's definitely the right train. I'll put a couple of pictures up here on the screen for you guys. This is how I verified it on top of this train. See that little spot? I can see that in the pictures. And then there's also, where is it? Right here. On this corner right here, there's a little paint chip. So as you can see in the pictures there, it's definitely the right one. So one of us just made a whoopsie and put it in the wrong thing. I think what happened was when I needed a drawer for all those Desk and Derek pins, I think I moved, we had the trains were spread out through three or four different drawers. So I think what happened was this one got missed when I converted everything from SM12 to SM10. So it happens, but Look at your photos that will help you verify that you have the right item. So this actually sold for $4.99. Again, a super low item price, but super fast to list. And honestly, it's probably been in the store for a while. So I was listing tons of low, low dollar items a year ago, six months ago even. So definitely trying to get out of that habit. So our last item is actually in Zenith's office. So let's go get that one. I'll see you in just a second. Okay, so our last item is actually called Museum Gel and I just decided to store it in Zena's office where it's temperature controlled because some days, I mean, we're in Oklahoma, it gets over hundred degrees regularly during the summer. So I didn't want it to melt in the container. It's right here with the video games. It looks super out of place, but this is what it is. So it's for glass and crystal. So you, had, you put a little bit of this gel it just looks like a clear, clear substance. You put a little bit of the gel on the bottom of stuff that's breakable and it sticks it to the shelf that you're displaying it on so that it won't tip over if somebody bumps the cabinet it's in or the shelf or whatever. So I think that that's what its pur purpose is. It says it's instantly removable and reusable. So kind of cool, just a little gel substance to keep stuff from tipping over. That sold for $9.99. And this was something totally random in a box. I don't remember where we found it, but I just grabbed it and uh, it sold for 10 bucks, so not mad at that at all. So now that we have our orders pulled, I actually had a request from, actually my mom, who is a newer eBay seller, and I've mentioned that before recently. Um, she started out with just books and like ephemera and stuff, but now she's kind of expanding into other things, like she's sold some little uh, toy horses and she's got some purses listed and stuff like that, so that's really cool. Um, shout out to Bookery Homer, that's her name on eBay, if you guys wanna go check out her stuff. Um, She's new at it and she's doing well. So um, she actually requested one day when we were talking about shipping, I mentioned how we ship our DVDs and anything in a plastic case like that, CDs, cassettes, DVDs, Blu-rays, video games, whatever, anything like that. I mentioned to her, to her how we wrap them in cardboard before we put them into a bubble mailer just to give them a little extra uh, protection and it's free because it's scrap cardboard. So I'm gonna show you guys how we do that. These are actually the flaps off of boxes. When Xena breaks down boxes or when I break down boxes, we will cut the flaps off and use them for shipping. So I'm gonna grab, I'm just gonna grab this biggest one, big long flap that came off a huge box. And we'll use this to wrap a DVD. Now we didn't sell a DVD, but I'm just gonna do this for example, for mom. So, and for those of you who are curious, so I figured I would just include it here. All right guys, so I've got the camera tilted down so you can't see me very well, but you'll be able to see everything I'm doing and as I'm explaining it. So we've got all of our supplies here. We've got a random DVD. I chose Scooby-Doo and the zombies. So uh, we're just gonna wrap that and, and then I'll save, I'll save this after I've wrapped it. I'll cut it open and I'll reuse it on another DVD when one sells. So, um, so what we have is our cardboard. We've got our DVD. We have 
a yard stick. I use this as a guide for when I'm cutting. We've got our handy shed flips um, box resizer cutter. I love this thing. Nice sharp blades. We change them out from time to time and then it's got the little spiky wheel on the back. So uh, I've got that. And so that's my favorite box cutter. And then I've got two envelopes. And I'll show you here momentarily why I have two different ones out. So I'll show you the difference in those. But let's go ahead and get started. What we're gonna do is take our DVD. So I know that this is the flattest edge. You can see I already peeled that tape off. It had a piece of tape. I always peel that off just in case so that it doesn't stick when you're trying to put it into the bubble mailer. So I'll take this and I could do it long ways and wrap it this way, or I can wrap it this way sideways so I'd rather do that this cardboard is almost the perfect height for this so I get it lined up as straight as I possibly can here on the cardboard and because I like to cut with my right hand this is how I set it up you could set it up this way if you're a left-handed cutter and you want to cut like this but I'm right-handed so I'm gonna turn this around get that lined up again because I messed it up a little. I just get it as close to the edge as possible and square it off as much as I can. I'm not going to have much to trim off here, but let's see here. So I'm going to gently put this up against the edge of that. This is so much easier with a wider this way piece of cardboard, but so I'm going to just press that down really hard so it doesn't shift on me. You can see it's trying to pop up. So now I'm going to, it's a long piece of cardboard to do this with get it on the edge there and I'm just going to drag and kind of create like a score line. I'm not pressing all the way down, especially on this countertop. I don't want to scratch our granite. So I'm going to score that along the edge without cutting my yardstick, which I have done before. I got a little crazy and cut into one of my yardsticks. So it's got a little like dip on one. It's right there. I dipped into it right there. So I have to make sure I use this side now, but let me put that to the side. So now I don't know if you guys can see, it's got a little score mark. So to finish that off, I'm gonna go ahead and dip into it and go a little deeper, just to get it a little closer. This is a huge piece of cardboard. So then I'm gonna, hopefully you guys can see this okay. I'm gonna take it halfway off so it's still got some rigidity when I cut, poke down in there all the way. And that edge is loose. So now I'm just gonna flip it around and do the same thing. Get it in there. There we go, it's going. And it'll naturally kind of stay in that little score mark that you created. So now I've got this long scrap. I'm just gonna toss that to the side for now. I'll throw that away. And this, as you can probably guess, so an easy way to know if your cardboard is long enough when you choose it is to take your, just like if you're wrapping a gift, take your item, lay it down. This is how long you need it to be. That's as long as you need it to be to come end to end. So you wanna go over a little bit so that it will overlap when you wrap it. So what the, the cheat that I've come up with, instead of going ahead and cutting this to size, what I'll do is I'll take this. I, this is why I do this on this countertop because I have this edge that I can use and it's a nice square edge. So I'll take this and just guesstimate where I want my, how long I want the flap to come over. Just guess, it doesn't matter where exactly you do it, just as long as you have enough. So now I've, I did that really fast. So I just got it to where I want it, press down and let it naturally bend where it wants. Uh, the cardboard tends, to, you can see the little rib lines. It tends to want to bend where you see the little rib lines. In between, it doesn't want to bend as easily. So I let it naturally bend where it wants and then I take the DVD, video game, whatever it is, Ooh, look at that. I got that right to the edge. That may be a little extra. I'll probably end up cutting that off. But so now I've got like this. I hold it in there. Man, I hope you guys can see this okay. Let's see. I'm trying to figure out if I can get this a little bit closer for you guys so you can see it a little better. So I'm holding it like this. And then, see, if I do it this way, can y'all see it a little better? See how I've got my, I'm holding it there with it flat. Press the DVD or whatever it is need a little more room. My cardboard's too long. Press it like that. Let's see if I can tilt this a little more. There we go. So I'm holding the DVD flat against the edge of the countertop and I have this as flat as I can. And then I'm just going to push with my palm against that edge. And I'm, I've actually gotten really fast at this. I've slowed it down a lot just for the video, but 
So when I pushed down, it created a natural bend there. So now I have, that looks really nice. Nicely bent around that. And then I'm gonna do the same thing here. So I'm gonna hold it just like I have it right now. Press it against the edge of the, of the uh, countertop and press with my palm to kind of pre-bend it a little bit. And then it's going to easily bend over. And then I do that one last time here. Press, 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 get your bend. And there you have it. So now it's actually wrapped, but you have this big long flap. So now what I would do is take just wherever, as long as you have some overlap, open your blade, just let it naturally kind of cut down. Finish cutting the rest of the way through. Close that so I don't cut myself because I'm clumsy and I will. And now this is kind of wanting to pop up. So sometimes if you do like that, it'll stay down easier. And then here's my little tape trick that I do. So I wanna wrap this so that it will stay. If you just put a little piece, it's gonna pop. So I grab, I get my tape dispenser. I love this tape dispenser. It's nice and heavy, so it doesn't slide real bad. Grab my tape, pull it out, go way over. And then I'm just going to, I said it didn't slide and now it's sliding on me today. I wonder if it's because I have it on a different countertop. I normally have this sitting over there. But I just get it, make sure it's long enough that it's gonna wrap all the way over. And there you have it. So now this DVD is well protected and I'm also gonna drop it into a bubble mailer. And this is gonna keep the case from, um, if it takes a hit in shipping, because this is going media, this would go media mail if I was actually shipping this DVD today. It would go media mail. So if you're not familiar with media mail, it gets banged around a lot. Think about how heavy some books are and things like that that get shipped media mail and they get thrown around. So they're gonna, right? They're gonna bang into that. And it could crush it, could crack your case here. This, because of, uh, even though this is not covered right here, it should be fine. This, the middle, of course, as you guys know, is not the most structurally sound, so we have it like this. Now, here's the deal with the, with the poly mailers. These, as I said, this is like a standard nine by six by one, and they call it a DVD poly mailer commonly, and that's because you can take a DVD and slide it down in there with no protection at all whatsoever. So I have ordered these in the past, and it never works with my cardboard wrap. So I have found these on eBay. Um, I'll put a link in the description down below for these. I have bought these time and time again from the same vendor on eBay. They're a nine by six by one, but they're an XL. So they're actually a little more than a nine by six by one. I think it's, it's either a, is it a zero? I don't know, they, they, they code these bubble mailers with like zero, one, there's a double zero, a triple zero, things like that. So. This one is considered an XL and you can see when you put the two together it has that little bit of extra. So here is without these little edges is your usable space. So you actually gain like probably a quarter, somewhere between a quarter and a half an inch, but these are perfect. I love these. They come in different colors. We actually just ordered these in green. So we're almost done with the purple. I order them like a thousand at a time and this will fit down in there. It's a little snug. You kind of got to work it in there, but slides right on down in there. And I'm not going to seal this, but I press it all the way down there. It is snug. So everything is nice and firm. It has bubble wrap all the way around. I tuck that, flip it over, seal it in and it's ready to go. And I'm probably jinxing myself, but I have yet to have a customer complaint on this. I've actually gotten a lot of good feedback on how well packed video games and DVDs and things, CDs, things like that were. So I, I stand by the cardboard method. I've been doing it since I first started reselling online over on Mercari long before eBay. So I've always done it that way. Um, I don't know, maybe it's just me being worried that something's gonna get to somebody and it's gonna be messed up. So I always do it this way. Zena does it this way. She's gotten really quick at it too. So um, I hope this helps. Mom, if you're watching, I know you are. You always watch my videos because you love me and you support me and I, I appreciate it. Um, I hope this helps you out. Um, I do the same for books. Like I have some Goosebumps books sitting over here that uh, I've shipped some off and I do this exact same thing with books. Um, like the giant Civic book that I got to send out today. If it wasn't $75 book, 
I'd probably wrap it and put it into a giant bubble mailer and send it that way, but I'm gonna put this one in a box because it's a higher priced item, so uh, just that little added protection for a higher priced item makes the customer feel like they were taken care of, in my opinion. So this is all in my opinion. Uh, if you ship DVDs, just throw them in a bubble mailer, that's your preference. So everybody can do it their way, but this is what we do, and I just figured I'd share it with you, especially since Mom wanted to see it. So there you go, Mom. Love you. But, um... Anyway guys, that's pretty much it for this video. So our next task is um, upcoming this uh, this next coming week on uh, July 9th. I'll put it on the screen. On Dibdit, we're gonna be auctioning off t-shirts and other clothing and maybe some hats. Maybe, don't quote me on the hats. Maybe some hats over on Dibdit from the storage unit and some of the other vintage items that we have around the house that haven't made it to the booth yet or haven't made it online. So we're going to auction that stuff off and it's gonna be cheap. Everything will start at $2 starting bids. Um, shipping, we've been doing $5 shipping on your first item, $1.50 on any additional item. I assume that will probably continue with this. Like I don't see I think the weights will be right for that, so that will probably be correct. Um, we're gonna get the, all that sorted, washed, ready to go, loaded, preloaded in, so you guys can go see exactly what we are selling on Dibdit this coming week. And then the following week is gonna be VHS. Guys, we have hundreds and hundreds of VHS from that storage locker. Let me tilt this up. I feel like I'm bending way down to talk to you guys. <laughs> So uh, we've got tons and tons of VHS from that storage locker. I've gone through every single one of them. I spent an entire day the other day going through all of them, checking them, making sure it's the right one, making sure they're not damaged, making sure they're not like some huge bolo on eBay. Um, but there are some good ones in there. We've got some 10, some $15 VHS that we're gonna be putting in those and we're gonna be doing lots of four. Um, but if you guys are interested in checking that out and you wanna get your hands on some of the stuff from our storage unit, make sure you go sign up on dibdit.com. There is a link in the description below. If you click on that link and use that to sign up, you get a $5 credit from Dibdit um, to your account to spend on whatever you want. You can use it on a buy it now, uh, buy it now listing. You can use it on a, uh, an auction, a live auction, whatever you wanna use it for, but $5 credit for you. And I get a $5 credit as well for anybody who signs up in that method. So make sure you use that link down below if you haven't signed up yet. It's a lot of fun. It's a fun way for you guys to come chat with myself or if Zena's there with Zena as well. I love it when Zena's around during auctions, but sometimes it's not possible because she does have a day job. So um, anyway, guys, I'm talking a lot. This video is getting long, but I love you guys. Um, this is what I'm doing today, day after, after almost said Thanksgiving, day after 4th of July. So um, I gotta get this stuff packed up, get this video edited for you, edited for you guys. And uh, oh, go check out the short that I put out last night. On July 4th, I put out a short. It is a huge fireworks fail um, with some family members from the past, um, from my previous marriage, but uh, we're all still friends. But I have this video on my phone and I've had it ever since 2016. We were doing 4th of July and we had a bit of an explosion. So go check that out. YouTube put a really crummy thumbnail on it. I can't change it. They won't allow me to change it. So it looks like just me being cheesy and saying happy Thanksgiving, or happy Thanksgiving. What the heck? Why am I obsessed with Thanksgiving? It's not November. So um, they, <laughs> they put this cheesy thumbnail on there. It looks like me being saying happy 4th of July, you know, which I do at the end of it, but it's actually, fireworks got wrong. So go check that out. It's really funny. Um, I laugh at it every single year on 4th of July. I pull that video up and I watch it like 10 times and I laugh hysterically the whole time because to me, it's way funny. But anyways, guys, enough rambling. Love you guys. We'll catch you guys on the next one. Next video will come out on Tuesday. Let me know in the comments down below. What do you want to see? Do you want to see um, more garage sale footage? We do have footage from uh, some previous garage sales that I haven't put out yet. I can do that. Or maybe we can do something uh, with prepping to get ready for Dibdit from the storage unit. Um, we could. I've been trying to talk Zena into going dumpster diving again. We were gonna go last night or the night before, but it keeps raining, so we haven't been able to. But let me know what you guys want to see, and we'll do our best to get something filmed for you for this weekend. So garage sales, dumpster diving, prep for uh, Dibdit auction, whatever you guys want. If there's something else you guys can think of, let us know in the comments down below. But we appreciate you guys. Love you so much. Like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. We'll catch you on the next one. Bye, guys.